All right, there we go. We've got recording started and welcome to day three of Commsverse here in the US. Uh, really happy to be here with the rest of the Comms V Next crew to talk about what's going on and uh, what's happened so far. Um, really thankful to uh, Mark, Randy and Martin just for this opportunity to, to join forces, um, love the community aspects here uh, that we've been able to uh, foster and love what they're doing. And, and this has been an amazing event. So um, just want to thank everybody who's who's joining us here this morning um, and who's who's been faithfully watching all of the sessions. Hopefully you've been able to go to a bunch of good ones. I know we're going to talk about some of the ones that we've been to um, and some of the ones that we're looking forward to here today. So with that, I'm going to toss it out to, to the crew. Well, what was I the was... highlight of everybody's yesterday, uh, aside from the Beard and Hat show? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah, so I uh, I was up late, uh, as a big surprise, I'm sure, um, and I caught a couple of Asian uh, uh, sessions, um, part of the Crestron Flex session about uh, Teams rooms for all the different spaces. Uh, the schedule actually said it was going to be uh, Graham Walsh, which is why I tuned in to see what he had to say. It was actually somebody else from Crestron, but uh, a great overview of all the different offerings that Crestron has for the different meeting spaces, how they can be extended with, you know, custom room controls, um, et cetera. So lots of lots of great information there. I mean, obviously very vendor biased uh, around the Crestron stuff, but, um, you know, they make great stuff. So uh, it was it was good to see. Uh, the, the other session that I, I attended and really liked was um, MS700 uh, managing Microsoft exam uh, prep. And Chris Horde talked about that and did a phenomenal job, I thought. Um, you know, it wasn't a brain dump, but it was a great session in, you know, breaking down the three core components that the test covers. Um, and then what he did, I thought was a great touch was, he said, you know, here, here are some of the things that you need to know, and then proceeded to show you where each of those things is in the relevant admin portal, right? So, you know, hey, you want, you want to assign a uh, configuration policy to uh, meeting rooms. Here it is in the Teams Admin Center. Here are the different things that you can kind of do. And then, you know, hey, you want to configure expiration policies on groups. That's in Azure AD. That's what it looks like here. Here's where it is. Here's some of the different things that you can do. Here are some of the things that you should know about and some relevant uh, PowerShell commands to, to accomplish that. And I mean, he, he, he wasn't going super fast, but he crammed a lot of information into about 50, 55 minutes uh, of that session and, and could have easily gone longer. He talked about using, um, you know, demos.microsoft.com or the CDX site if you're a partner uh, and all the different things to kind of help prepare you for uh, taking the exam. So hats off to, to Chris for a, a great overview on that experience. That's awesome. I, I'm going to make a note of that because I actually know yeah. somebody who's looking for really good resources on prepping for the 700. So that sounds like it would be the whole here's the answer, but also here's where you go do it hands on. That that sounds like a perfect format for, for prepping. So yeah, and he, you know, he starts off with basically, here is the experience of taking a Microsoft exam, right? He mm -hmm. talks about in person exams versus, you know, online proctored exams, you know, the the scoring, everything and then dives right into it. So if you've never taken a Microsoft certification exam before, I mean, he kind of covers everything. That's awesome. Yeah, I definitely should probably go watch that because I know that's on my list of to do. going back to our conversation around to do. It's actually on my to do list is to take the 700 exam. Um, I, I kept thinking I'd go into it and try it blind and just see how I do. But, uh, uh, you know, we all know how that works out typically. So maybe I'll go watch Chris's and set myself up for success. Uh, but it sounds awesome. The fact that, you know, like you said, um, it's not a brain dump, but it's it's a spot to learn how to educate yourself around the product so that you're prepared for that test and yeah. and you're prepared to show. Plus, you you need to learn that. I mean, it's these these tests aren't just a, a, a checkbox. It's show show that you know this stuff because if, especially if you're if you're out there like most of us are are talking to customers, um, you know, if you're just a paper certified person, that's that doesn't help anybody and it doesn't help yourself either. So uh, it's awesome that he's he's putting out that kind of great content. 
Yeah, it was it was great coverage because, you know, you can't do everything in the team's admin center, right? So some right. of the stuff you have to do in the security portal or Azure AD and, you know, and he kind of brings all that stuff together. Awesome. Something I did yesterday that's not necessarily session related, but I, I spent a couple different uh, interactions out on the uh, in the in the expo hall. Uh, and it was fun to just walk around and bump into some people from different places and I turn around and right when you come into the room, I turn around and right there is Matt Landis. And so we strike up a chat and start talking about things. And uh, I got a chance to talk with some other people over by the team's taco truck. And that was, you know, the sessions are, are great as well. But that was something I enjoyed doing yesterday. And I want to try to make a little bit of time to do later today as well Is that really is that bumping into people. And, oh, hey, how's it going? Okay, let's catch up. Uh, I enjoyed that part of yesterday quite a bit. I did not see any hats by the team's taco truck, Jonathan. Uh, but uh, yeah, uh, I'm pretty sure I put it in the. It may have been a little bit later. I may have maybe. May have yeah. <laughs> well, so so you can try in about an hour. I'll definitely put the hats there. So okay, all right. So yeah, and you, 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 the UK happy hours come up, coming up here in about an hour. Okay, all right. That good stuff. UK happy hour. Maybe I'll make an, another beverage for uh, enjoying the UK happy hour, but I don't think it can be the, quite the same beverage as the the folks over there. <laughs> Otherwise, it would probably just ruin me for the rest of the day. <laughs> well, I, I, I will say this. It, it could get a little busy in there because uh, E now is running a giveaway where Sweet. They're, uh, they're doing $350 plus two tickets to the next scheduled maintenance party, which we oh, all wow. know how it is to get into that. That's, that's a big deal. So. Yeah. Yeah, we definitely. That's that's definitely a big deal. If people haven't seen or know what the uh, scheduled maintenance parties are uh, from from Ignite and uh, other uh, other spots, that's uh, uh, th those are those are parties of legend. <laughs> I think there's a website for it, right? To, yeah. to pretty much. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. No, that's cool. Yeah, for sure. So, so looking forward. Had, to oh, go oh, ahead. Yeah, go ahead. I was just going to ask Jonathan because I think uh, staying on the alt space and the virtual reality, Jonathan, you got to uh, um, attend a bunch of that yesterday and, and everything. How did? Uh, unfortunately, I had to uh, miss the VRX session because of uh, dad duties. Um, but how did that go? I, I'm really curious. That, that was actually one session I really wanted to catch. Yeah, it, it went really well. Um, the uh, they they had two presenters on stage, uh, one on each side, um, and um, uh, Peter was actually in a VR headset. He had, he had a couple of issues with that, but um, presentation-wise, it, it, it came off really well. The, uh, the VRX stuff is interesting in that they've basically taken like a 3D camera and taken some video. Um, and um, what they do is that they visually let the person see the body, and then they do um, uh, sensations somewhere else at the same time that they're showing the sensations in the video. And uh, it, it retrains the brain um, as, as to where our neurological pathways go. And they had, they had some other stuff too, but that was just really fascinating how the VR stuff, your, your, what you see can remap things in your mind um, over time. So they also technologically wise, they talk about uh, SharePoint spaces. So um, SharePoint spaces is a way to organize a SharePoint list, but in a virtual reality manner. So. They, uh, on their site, you can actually go in uh, with a VR headset and, and view a lot of their videos that they've done in, in a VR format. So that was kind of cool from that perspective. That's awesome. Yeah, I was, I was really curious. I mean, it's it's really neat how, how we can take technology like that and, and apply it into areas that I know I would have never thought about you know, from that standpoint. So having having that as a therapy model uh, is pretty phenomenal. So uh, love yeah. how people get creative with that stuff. Was there, how, how did the crowd dynamic work with that, Jonathan? I, I also had duties that, that uh, conflicted with the time, but uh, as far as people kind of gathering around and participating in that session, how did that, how did that come off and go from a crowd perspective? It went pretty well. We uh, there's an interesting thing that happened. We we actually had the room set to be public, so we had more than just uh, commsverse attendees come into the room. And uh, actually, wow. a lot of yeah, a lot of the people were engaged with the session, um, even though that wasn't the intended audience. So 
Um, huh. it, it, was, it, was, it was rather interesting. But the, the room itself is set up to be uh, like stadium seating with a big screen up in front and all that. So everybody has a great view. And um, there's, there's uh, um, like meeting controls where I can mute everybody and I can amplify people's voices. And, you know, we have all sorts of stuff like that. People can raise their hand virtually. Yeah. Yeah, it was yeah, I, I, kind of see that. Chatting with uh, some of the panelists this morning, I, I did a panel this morning, talk a bit about that in a second, but chatting with a couple of them, they they were bringing up how they really enjoyed going and exploring the virtual reality side of it. And they said that exact thing. They're like, I'd like to see a lot of these sessions brought into that format, you know, where you have these rooms, you can step outside of the expo hall and into the uh, into the session room and attend that way. So there was some interest in doing that. I know it was an explored thought uh, earlier on, but uh, this story just made me curious how that particular one went since that was the format for it. And good to hear that it was a good experience. It went really well. We, um, since it's so new, we wanted to we wanted to test the waters before we did an entire conference in VR. But I, I think there's a possibility it could be done, um, if especially if people have enough lead time to get there. Yeah. You know, and after seeing the not Pat Richard uh, face being pasted onto a, a avatar, I think we could all, you know, pull that off somehow. So have an entire conference full of Pat Richard faces. You know, so. what, 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 what was so funny about that is if you go back to the not Pat Richard antics of the last MVP summit, where his face was plastered on a person wearing an Argyle sweater, and then in VR he was wearing an Argyle sweater, just, yeah, that's, that's a really me <laughs> I, I love the fact that that is still going on because Pat, I can I, I know exactly where that picture came from because I was there for that that incident and that was the very first time I ever got to meet you in person. Um, uh, you and John Cook at, was at that was at Joey's that night, um, and so um, I love the fact that that's that that still lives on. <laughs> Some seven yeah. plus years later, you know, a, a, another reason that in-person uh, conferences and and events still have a place, right? Exactly. You, you get that, you get the uh, the drunken stories and and stuff like that. But <laughs> what I'm hearing here is Jonathan's going to want budget money to do VR stuff at uh, <laughs> at Coms V next, and uh, um, well, he wanted it. He wanted it for this year already, so uh, yeah. he had already asked. So uh, we'll, we'll we'll I do think that. It, it'll be interesting to see how this plays along um, even once we are allowed to go back into in person how we can how people can then engage and how we can bring some of these sessions because I think it's I think one of the things that commsverse is showing me is is that um, you know and we talked about this a little bit on the beard and hat show last night around the virtual conferences but there are so many people who want to participate and want to engage in the community, and there may be some natural blockers, um, whether companies, whether their organization won't pay for them to go to an in-person conference. Um, you know, they didn't get, they weren't one of the people who drew, you know, because for some of these bigger companies, we've all worked for them, where, um, you know, five people get to go to Ignite. Well, you might not be one of those five or whatever it is. And how do you really bring people in to that community, um, and I think that there's going to have to be some way, um, especially as conference organizers, that we really try to think about how do we engage people better and differently um, in and where they're at. So, and there's definitely a obviously with Commsverse, we've seen there's a demand for the worldwide conference. Um, you know, it's it's you know we talked about it on on the bearded hat where it's like hey when you're in person it's you're in person and and you can only do that time zone and you're right that is difficult but how do you break that apart so that some people can join in if they're not they don't happen to be in the US or they don't happen to be in Europe or the UK or you know in the Asia Pacific uh, region so how do you how do you how do you bring that it really helps to bring cultures together and to bring the community together when we can do that yeah Absolutely. So, so good day yesterday. What are we What are we looking forward to today? There's quite a bit going on. I can get it started there. That I I started my day right before this, actually immediately before this, with a uh, a panel uh, talking about kind of the future of of voice services in uh, in the modern workplace. And it was a panel of uh, six experts, uh, executives across various 
uh, vendors and partners in the Microsoft ecosystem from SPC providers to application providers, et cetera. Um, and that was a very interesting uh, discussion. You know, we had we kind of went through in an organized manner. We had six questions and had a couple of them weigh in on, on different areas, solicited some feedback from the audience at one point on uh, kind of what they view as still needing to be present in the Microsoft Teams client, uh, as well as supporting solutions. Uh, so I really, I really enjoyed doing that, but really hearing the thoughts and perspectives of these leaders. Uh, one thing I will note there is that, you know, they, they kind of mentioned a couple times that, well, I'm probably just going to echo the thoughts of, you know, whoever was talking right before them. Um, but it, to me, what that said is there's, there's kind of a consensus about where things are at, where they're heading, what's next. Uh, in a lot of ways. And so it's one that I would encourage if you're interested in kind of getting the viewpoints of leaders in these services to go back and watch later on. It, it was a uh, it was really good to kind of get that that th those thoughts from outside the Microsoft uh, internal, uh, you know, from outside the product group, but people that work directly with the product group to bring services and uh, and, and products to the front line of, of teams and the platform. But uh, did that this morning. Uh, went well. Had a good good participation from the audience there. Uh, so that was how I started my morning. And uh, as far as what I'm looking forward to throughout the day, there is a lot of really good sponsor sessions again that are diving into some of these solutions uh, that we are just now getting access to, or that are in preview, or that are rolling out as we speak. So I really want to make uh, make use of a lot of uh, a lot of those as I'm able to. And then uh, towards the end of the day, there was one on here I wanted to call out uh, that was going to be from, I believe it was, yeah. So uh, Johan Delamont is going to be presenting on how to avoid the Microsoft Teams Islands Mode trap. And I, it seems like every, every engagement I'm working on with Migrating Voice right now has an element of the Islands Mode trap that we're trying to figure out, great, how do we get out of this mess? And so uh, I'm looking forward to that one later on. I have to agree on that one. That's one that I actually want to hear because uh, I did a, a, a migration earlier this year uh, where we migrated 40,000 seats from Skype for Business to Teams only at, that had been in islands mode over a period of five months and how we did it. And I want to hear what, what Johan, I mean, I, obviously he's got some great sessions he had yesterday. We talked about his DIY uh, uh, lighting and, and everything session and, and, and now this one. So I'm really curious to see what, what tips and tricks he has for for that that I will I will go man I wish I had had that six months ago when I was in the midst of that that large migration um, because yeah I think I think there's a lot I, I'm not convinced it's a trap um, as as far as it goes either I actually after having gone through it a few times I really do think that I see the value of it more um, and so I'm really curious to hear what he's got to say on that yeah yeah, it, it, and it's interesting, the point of view where you're coming from, and it, you do kind of learn the value in some circumstances, and then you see other circumstances where you, you're like, okay, clearly this would have been a better scenario if you anticipated being in this yes. scenario much earlier. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, it's the anticipation it is, 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 is exactly it. But I, the one area that I think Islands Mode helps with um, more so than anything else is it really – forces people to move faster. Um, I think when if you're not in a, in a situation where you're trying to drive saturation like that, um, it allows it allows people it allows management to drag their feet a little bit more. Um, mm -hmm, yeah. and, I, and, I, and I think it's more management in that case. So like I said, I'm really curious. I'm, I'm looking forward to hearing more about what he's got going on with that because uh, it's uh, uh, I think there's a lot of a lot of interesting spots there. Uh, a lot of interesting thoughts. Yeah. But yeah, there's, there's again, looking down the list of it, there are so many great on both on several tracks, but especially voices where I get particularly interested. There's a lot of good voice integration and uh, augmented solution sessions out there today. So strongly encourage people to take a look at what's available and make sure you can hit as many as you can. Or, uh, or or use Richard Brennison's approach and do them all at once on various tabs in your browser. <laughs> so, Absolutely. Uh, I was going to say, I, I know one that I'm looking for. Uh, there's there's two that you, that you haven't mentioned yet that I'm really looking forward to, but one that I'm, I'm in particular that's not voice related um, is uh, Erica, uh, and I'm going to 
mispronounce her last name toll i think or tolly uh um i follow her on twitter because she's so smart and has such good insights on this stuff um it's on locate and protect your sensitive data in uh, microsoft teams um and she just knows her stuff with this so i'm looking forward to that one uh, to to hear what she has to say and get and give get some tips and tricks for uh for that because that's an area that i'm seeing more and more of um you, you know as, as somebody who naturally did a lot of voice but with teams being a bigger platform i'm being asked more and more about around the compliance side and things like that um you know our good friends uh from mnemonics and and landis have also talked about policy recordings and stuff like that which plays into the voice side but this goes beyond that into the data that like you know whether it's um you know sensitive data uh aspects so so that one i'm i'm really looking forward to um and then Pat, you mentioned uh, Chris Horde earlier with uh, the MS 700 prep, but he's got one that's uh, the flipped meeting. And uh, as I was reading through uh, the the synopsis, it really caught my eye of of you know ways to think about meetings differently. And so I'm I'm interested to see and hear what he's got to say on that. Yeah, if it's anything like his MS 700 uh, session, it'll be a lot of great info. Yeah. Um, it, the the um, session that you mentioned about locate and protect your sensitive data. Yeah, I, I'm the same way. I get a lot of customers now um, that are asking about um, security, security around their data, data. Loss, uh, data loss prevention, things like that. So especially as we start to deal with more companies, more global companies that have all kinds of different regulations, you know, in different regions of the world and, and understanding, you know, what we need to do to protect that data. Uh, one one session I, I really want to go see is the IVR designer for teams session mm -hmm. uh, from that. from Matt Landis. Um, you know I've known Matt for a, a zillion years, um, and uh, his company has always put out some great products. And uh, I'm looking forward to seeing how their um, uh, their IVR IVR designer application can be used with like Power Automate and things to kind of do a self service. Um, IVR solution. So um, hopefully that's uh, that's great info. And then um, a team uh, a team's uh, integrated um, intercom from Gert Van Hoot. Uh, uh, hopefully I, I I got that right. So um, you know I, I've always thought that you know intercom has always been somewhat of a, a gap in in some teams deployments. You know you want to do handset intercom or handset paging or whatever the case may be um so looking to see uh, what's covered in that session as well yeah he's he's from Helodor, and uh they were they were uh huge supporters of comms v next so uh glad to see them here at uh, comms verse as well yeah and of course I, I can't pass up a good powershell session yeah. <laughs> that's, that's, that's that's the one i had my eye on was that, yeah that the one awesome. with justin harris from enow is uh is going to be interesting. They they actually asked me to participate in that, but I had a hard time committing to it. So, um, you know, looking forward to seeing all the different things that uh, that Justin and and the Enow team is doing with uh, with PowerShell. And of course, we've got our our wrap up uh, yep. later on this afternoon at the at the end, where we kind of do a conference recap about everything we've seen throughout the conference, uh, as well as covering some of the sessions we've we've uh, attended between now and then. Yeah, it's funny yeah. that you mentioned uh, Justin's uh, session because he was he was uh, next on my list with the optimizing your network for Microsoft Teams today. Um, plus, he had a session yesterday um, uh, that I believe. And so just um, some of the stuff, I mean, we've got some incredibly great speakers that have come in and, and chimed in. And I know that we've predominantly, because we're all based in the US, have been focusing on uh, the sessions happening during the Pacific uh, daylight time. Uh, but you know, as I looked down through, and I, I tried to look, I was looking through the the uh, agenda for the Asia Pacific crowd, and I realized, you know what, nobody, the, probably nobody from that that time zone is going to be joining us right now because uh, it's about four or five a.m. right now for them, something like that, and. Uh, um, you know, but there's there's some great sessions that are being played over there. Um, and then obviously for me, Pat, I know you mentioned it that you were up at 2 a.m. I am not. And uh, so I missed out on some of the great uh, UK time zone um, sessions like from Tom Arbuthnot and folks like that. So um, 
it's it's hard to cover this like in 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 the appropriate way. Yeah, uh, I gotta know when when they wanted you to participate in that PowerShell session. Did they really just want to come on to kind of lock the screen on you here and there no. when you do a PowerShell gang sign? Oh lord! <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> I would have worn my PowerShell gang sign T-shirt uh, that I got uh, courtesy of John. Yeah. But, uh... <laughs> uh, you're 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 yeah. one of like ten of them, right? Yeah. <laughs> it was a limited edition. <laughs> no, but you know, and Chris Horde talked about as I mentioned earlier, you know, PowerShell and and you know, if you're going to be an admin in Teams. You can't just know the UI of Teams Admin Center and all that stuff because some things you just can't do in the UI. Um, you know, either the functionality isn't there or you can't scale it the way that you need to um, or kind of bundle everything together. So if you don't know PowerShell, um, you, you're going to end up out of a job eventually, I think, because you have to be able to do some things in PowerShell. And, having a good understanding of a, what you can do, which is everything, right? Um, you know, how you can do, you know, graph API stuff, how you can, um, you know, tie all the different products together and kind of take action across all of them, um, um, you know, is something that I think every team's admin should know. Absolutely. This, you know, that is the one thing as I look through here and you try to, figure out what you want to highlight, you start to quickly realize going down the list, you want to highlight everything. It's, it's, you look at the sheer number of sessions and it is overwhelming how many there are and you immediately go to, wow, there just must be a lot of extra stuff packed in here because this is just so much content. And it is unbelievable how many really intriguing, ooh, I want to see that sessions there are. Um, just, you know, another one I just popped across, a Teams integrated intercom, what is possible? I'm seeing so many how to integrate our future Teams environment with our overhead paging system, with our night bell, with intercoms. I'm seeing so many of, of that conversation lately. That pops out at me and it's just, there is an overwhelming amount of information here. It is really cool that you can participate in the whole conference for free. Uh, but you can go and for a very reasonable amount, get access to all the content on demand as well. And it, I just might have to go in there and do that because there is a incredible amount of stuff that there just isn't enough time to, to capture all of it. Exactly. And, and I'll echo that of, uh, um, you know, from that standpoint of the, the recordings past is, is such a, affordable way to get good training on this stuff. I mean, um, so many sessions in here are uh, uh, are sessions that you, you won't have an opportunity to hear in many other places, right? Especially if you're from like the US, hearing some of the folks from either the UK or the Asia Pacific timeframe or vice versa, right? You just It's hard to get into those sessions. Um, I know our friends um, over at Teams Fest um, will, will do sessions and a lot of them just happen too early in the morning, you know, that 2 a.m. to 6 a.m. time frame where, you know, it's it's hard for me to attend and, and things like that. So being able to get get a hold of the recordings um, and for an event like this, this, like I said, there's some unique ones that came in here. Um, I know a lot of people put in a lot of hard work to create all new content. This isn't the traditional content that we've seen in past, um, uh, you know, whether it's from Ignite or from other, uh, some of the other community events, uh, a lot of this is all brand new stuff. So it's awesome to see. You, yeah, you know, and I kind of have to admit on a, on a higher level, um, switching from a or, or reshifting focus, I should say, from a purely on-prem product area to one that is becoming largely cloud-based with still on-prem components, but Teams is cloud-based, you know, through and through. Uh, I kind of wondered from a conference perspective, from a speaker perspective, I'm like, well, this is really going to limit the amount of content or training opportunities that are out there for, for those in the community that speak. And this is a true testament that, sure, the platform type has shifted, but there is no lack in uh, things to talk about or to cover or to break down on a deeper level. There, there is still very much to cover here. So and there's it's, it's so encouraging. Much. Yeah, I mean, there's... Uh, and maybe Randy or Martin could come off and, and chime in, but how many total different sessions, but I think I heard 200 plus. Um, 231, my friend. 231, well, see, actually, I... 233 <laughs> if you count VR sessions. 
All right, 233. I didn't want to be too specific, so I knew it was over 200. Um, but yeah, thanks. Um, in 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 the Mark Vale, everybody. Mark Vale. Yeah, Vail. there you go. Exactly. There's <laughs> there's Mark for us. Um, but yeah, it's over 200 200 sessions, 233 sessions. Um, all of them, you know, unique. Um, that Josh to me is the testament of of how broad this platform is. I know myself. I I don't know about you guys, but I know myself. I always feel like when I start to write a blog or I start to want to talk, write a talk about something, I'm like somebody's already done it. Um, and <laughs> and yet yet here we have 230 something sessions that are unique and 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 showcasing the the power of the platform and and it's from all different angles and the creativity i keep coming back to it um the creativity of it is is amazing of where people can go from uh with it uh this this is something that every organization needs to be looking at how do they take advantage of more how do they extend the platform um into their business and really allow it to um, you know, we talk about that idea of digitally transforming, just putting teams in and just changing, you know, using IM and presence is not digital transformation. Um, you know, at talking about power automate and how do we really transform our business processes to to be able to do better, be more productive is, is what's critical here. You're, you're very you're very modest on the someone's already done that topic. I, I look at it and I think, yeah, someone's already done that topic, but not the way I'm going to do that topic. <laughs> well, there's just, I mean, let's just be honest. I, I, I've, I know I'm not the only one because I've talked to a few other MVPs who have the same kind of feeling. But, you know, even even though we may be MVPs, we all know that there's somebody out there who's who's doing amazing stuff. And um, I'll be honest, I just look at some of the smart people who are doing amazing stuff. And uh, there's a lot of times where I'm like, oh, man, I I got to really up my game. Um, and, and I look at it as the challenge of how do, how do I up my game for that stuff? <laughs> yeah, it is somebody that, you know, is tasked with trying to corral speakers, you know, for an event. Uh, I can only imagine uh, the effort, the Herculean effort that, that the team has done to, to pull this off. Right. Uh, but you know, that the, the interesting thing is as, as teams, and all the other stuff in Office 365 evolves. We have different groups coming in, right? So in the Scrape for Business days, you didn't typically have a lot of SharePoint developers showing up to, you know, Skype sessions. I mean, it just didn't really happen. Well, now, it, you know, there's a ton of them, right? So now we have all this extra flexibility, all these people coming up with different ideas, you know, the team's roadmap is is moving at a fast pace. You've got uh, added complexity like um, teams in GCC or GCC High, um, you know, with kind of a somewhat neutered uh, feature set. And you've got people de dealing with... Um, I love that, Pat. That's awesome. <laughs> I just say, I, I have a customer who calls GCC the no fun team. <laughs> <laughs> but, I mean, but, but I mean, you've you've got organizations that have had to go into those waters, right? And so people can come to these events and talk about the the specific experience that that they had in those in those scenarios, right? Because some people don't understand that you you go into GCC, you can't do everything that you can in a consumer tenant, right? And and how some organizations have had to deal with that, or you know, or some of the other things that people come up with, I get asked all the time about. We want to do faxing in Teams, right? <laughs> and you know, as much as I shake my head at that idea, it's you know, it's interesting to talk to different people and say and see how they kind of approach that, uh, and, and other similar requests, right? You know, tell them to pound sand or use a pots line or X medias or, or whatever the case may be. But, you know, bringing all these different people together from all the different walks of life, whether they're, you know, IT pros, you know, for a company, whether they're consultants like all of us are, um, or whether they're vendors, um, you know, it, it, it helps everybody, you know, and, and Adam, you and I were talking about the, uh, the team's community video before we get yeah. on the recording here and, and people talk about what the, what the team's community means to them and, and, and kind of a prevailing thing across all the people that were on there was people are willing to help, right? The community comes together. And if I have a question, I can reach out. I have all these different avenues to reach out. Uh, and you know, people will offer their experience or, or information. And 
you know, bringing these conferences together to kind of do the same thing. Uh, I don't know of another community that does that. Yeah. Right. right. Not, not like this one. Not, and yeah, I mean, it's, it's been tremendous. So hear me out on this, Jonathan. I think I've got another uh, shirt idea here for us. Um, <laughs> this this will be, and, and I'm going to start at the, at the top of the shirt. You know how you have those like comfort uh, um, uh, shirts that show uh, tour dates for, you know, different, uh, different musical bands or whatever they're going up there and doing their shows. I think we have a top level one that has, not Pat Richard hashtag sayings. And under that we have get off my lawn, neutered version of teams, go pound sand. And we just put all these things in there. Oh boy. Uh, that could uh, work. That could work. That's awesome. The community is, I mean, it's, it is the glue here though. It is, it is what everybody is rallying around. It is a community that I think is truly unique you see it across the Microsoft ecosystem that there are other communities. You got your Azure community and other ones that, that I think uh, do a good job in all that. Of course, I haven't been fully immersed in all of them, but I think our our community in the team space is truly unique. And so the people that organize around it and that kind of help rally a lot of us and uh, they put that effort into putting events like this on to bring everybody together on the Microsoft side, you know, people on the product group team who enable all the interactions that there are there. It just, uh, it's once in a while, I got to stop, step back and say, thank you for all that you do there. It is, it is pretty cool to be a part of something where everybody comes together like this and has this, this commonality that they can kind of, uh, bond with. So it's, 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 it's a cool experience. Yeah, and I and I think I'll I'll kind of not just echo that, but also lay out the challenge to double down on it. You know, um, I think there's a lot of us who we've all gotten to know each other. We talked about this um, yesterday when we were talking about how people might feel feel more comfortable in alt space in the virtual reality, being able to walk up and engage in a conversation that might be more uh, versus jumping into a Teams. Like I know, um, you know, Ben Lee had the uh, MSUC teams meeting that was going on for a while and you'd get 30 people jumping in on that but it would be really hard if you were new to 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 engage in that conversation and whether this is in the ms tech community uh, forums or wherever how do we reach out to to those people um, and help give them a voice so that they can feel comfortable to come in uh, because just no different than any other uh, uh, community, it can be hard to break in, and I, I, you know, not everybody's as extroverted. Um, and I'm going to call them out, but you know, Eric Marcy, you know, you're you're very extroverted in that way and willing to jump in, but not everybody's that way. And so, um, how do we help bring people in? How do we, you know, especially those of us who have been around um, a long time? You know, Pat, you guys had the UC Architects and um, and things like that. So some of us are more known than others. Um, but how do we double down on on bringing people into the community? Mm. And there's there's some good lessons here. I think there's a lot of really good yeah. initiatives that help kind of crack the uh, crack the can open there. Uh, oh, absolutely. But it, it's it's a it's a challenge for sure to continue to dwell on and think on mm -hmm. as we navigate what is next. You know, and in the panel I was at uh, that I was on right before this, that's kind of how we started the whole thing out is taking a look at how the world has changed and trying to get a handle on what the future looks like when we don't quite know what's happening with this whole crazy new way of doing things. Uh, how do we begin to navigate it? And I think that uh, this is a great, awesome, you know, a great way, what we're experiencing here to kind of crack into that. But I hope that it spurs on more creativity with other ways that we can start to engage as a community uh, beyond the traditional. Uh, and in ways that are engaging and inclusive and draw people in that aren't naturally extroverts. Uh, I, I hope I hope it does that. I hope it spurs more creativity there. Yeah, and especially in this time where many people can't leave their homes or can't leave like to travel or things like that. I mean, I know we won't be able to have the UC user group here in Denver in 2020. We've basically been told that that not to expect to be able to go into a building. Um, and oh, so, so, you know, from that yeah. standpoint, we're going to be looking at how do we continue to drive that. And, you know, here in September, when we would normally do our food drive, we're going to have to think about how do we handle that? Because we're we're not giving up on some of those things, those base things from a community standpoint. Um, 
but how, how do you bring people and how do you find them and engage is, is important to think about. I love uh, this. You know, uh, go ahead there, Pat. I was just going to say, you know, the, the social media aspect of it can't be understated, right? I mean, the fact that you can follow a hashtag or individuals and get all this free information, not only about the product, but where to go and find other information, right? So, I mean, we all tweet about, you know, the user group meetings that we're involved with or the conferences that we're involved with. Um, and I, I think that people can get all that information for free. They can kind of, you know, the, the introverts can kind of go into those, you know, slowly and figure out what's going on and whether that's something that they want to be involved with. But I mean, there's there's no shortage of opportunities for people to either attend, um, you know, conferences or user group meetings or all this stuff to find out more about um, about the products that they're working with or passionate about. But also lots of opportunities to get involved in all of these events. Right. You want to speak at an event. It's really not that complicated. It's really not that big of a deal. Right. You it, it it's. It's easy, right? I mean, it's 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 pretty simple, um, and there's lots of opportunities to do that, you know, um, in user groups or conferences, you know, virtual conferences where you're looking at a camera. You don't even see all the people in the room. So if if that whole concept is is just scary to you to to be in front of a whole room of people, you don't even see them. You're just looking at a camera, right? Exactly. Um, you know, and and I think there's. There's just a wealth of knowledge out there, um, tribal knowledge that people have that could really benefit the, the community. So if you are involved in teams or some of the ancillary technologies um, and you've come up with creative ways of, of solving problems um, or you're looking for creative ways to solve problems, get involved with some of these community efforts, the user groups, the, the conferences, whatever. Um, yeah. and, and it'd be a contributor and kind of a, um, a participant in all of those. And I think the community as a whole wins as a result. Yeah, and I'll, I'll say this on your speaker comment. The user groups are always looking for speakers. We, I, as, as somebody who puts a user group together, um, and this is yeah. for anybody who's listening on here uh, or here, who ends up listening, you can contact me at Adam Seaball on Twitter. Um, we are always looking for speakers in at, at the uh, Colorado UC user group. We've got um, six more sessions or five more sessions this year. Uh, we're always looking for people. And if you want to, and this is the perfect time, because like you said, Pat, it's all virtual. It's all remote. Uh, you don't have to be standing in front of somebody. We're smaller crowds, typically the user groups. I think, I, you know, I don't know about Detroit and Tampa and, and places, but here in Colorado, we can have anywhere from five to 20 people. Um, they're not huge crowds and and we're all good friends. And, uh, and if you're new, you're our new friend. Um, so from that standpoint, um, it, it, as far as that goes, so we, we, we welcome people to come in. Well, okay, Graham, so what's the dog's name? <laughs> <laughs> It can either be Chewbacca or Max. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that works. That works. I see Chewbacca. That. Both, yeah, both work. <laughs> uh, you know, another thing that I, I wanted to say about, you know, especially user groups, um, is you show up and sometimes you'll win stuff. I mean, exactly. you get free gear, right? I mean, that's that that's hard to pass up. You know, I don't know how many times I, I've won stuff at, at the Detroit um, uh, user group. Um, and, and, but it's, it, the social networking aspect is great too, because you know the the user groups they have kind of an agenda where where they present a couple of different topics, but you know in between those and before and after, uh, you've got the the chance to walk around and talk to other people. And whether it's you know the the speakers or the host with Microsoft here in Detroit or, or whatever the case may be, you, you get to build those contacts and expand your own personal community. Um, yeah to help you do your job and, and to help them do theirs. Yeah. And that's absolutely true. Cause that's how Jonathan and I met was at the UC user group here in, in Colorado. So, uh, you know, he, he sat back there and taunted me with, uh, his knowledge of, uh, of what was going on as I tried to present went back when I knew very little. Who's interrupting uh, me? 
<laughs> Actually, I think it was more like, why aren't you up here presenting then? Um, and that's, I think that's how that conversation went down. And that was 10 years ago now. So or eight years ago, something like that. Um, and so history has been made. But yeah, no, I think that's, as we think about these community events like Commsverse and Comms Next and everything, so much of it starts at the user group level um, and, and starts at the community level there. Um, you know, you can't think globally like Commsverse did if you hadn't started locally somewhere. So I have a question, and, and I know we're, we're about out of time, but um, do you think that with the virtual nature of some of these conferences that we will see some convergence of those? I mean... Like, like they start combining? Yeah. Yeah, I think there's a good chance of that. I think it depends on how long the... Uh along this the, the current state of uh, social distancing continues on, right? I think that as different events are, start grappling with, is there a return to normalcy on the horizon? Or does it not look like that's going to happen anytime soon? Then there might be more heavy brainstorming about how, how we, how we uh, have a better or, you know, a bigger or better impact. I think I think what you're going to see is if you start seeing repeating content, people are not going to attend those as well. So you're, it's it's naturally going to start to, as you said, converge these conferences together to where you have unique content that's presented. Um, but you can only do that so much before people, you know, they're they're, they're just going to start tuning it out if it's the same stuff, right? So especially yeah. if the recordings are available. Yeah, you know, and, and I, I'll pick an example, right? So, you know, get CS Latam, right? So that's evidently a great conference. I haven't been able to attend. But, you know, when we look at Commsverse, Commsverse was able to put sessions together for basically everywhere around the world, right? So now we're not, com we're not confined by geographical area um, in, in the virtual aspect. So if we combine you know, some conference, some common conferences together, you get a bigger reach for uh, each of those that are, are combining. Um, and I, I think that's a win-win. I'm not saying that for a second that this replaces um, on-prem or physical conferences, right? I want to go to Ignite. I want to go to some of these other events. Uh, but I, I think that there's probably some value add in combining some of these together and taking all the resources uh, of all the organizers involved and, and pooling them together. I mean, what Mark and Randy and Martin have done in this one has been just phenomenal. It's a Herculean effort, obviously. And, and, and I think the four of us can agree because, hey, we put on a conference as well, right? We can yeah. only imagine what, what it takes to do this. Uh, but I think if you combine all these things, even if it's a, a hybrid of, uh, a physical conference with a virtual aspect of it. If we maybe combine some of these uh, remote uh, conferences, that there, there's another added benefit for the community. Yeah, totally. I, I think the, the one thing though that uh, that Commsverse had going for you is I'm pretty certain uh, Mark just doesn't sleep. So <laughs> yeah, you got to find one of those that you know, I can do that. <laughs> Mark, Mark can attest to this. I told him last night that he needs to watch a burnout uh, session. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. He, he needs to take some holiday for sure um, after this. Hopefully, he can, uh, you know, make that happen and uh, and everything. And same for the rest, because I know Martin and Randy have been doing a great job. Anytime I've needed something, uh, as you know, just find wh whichever one of them is online and and they're posting right back and answering questions. It's uh, their attention to details been been fantastic because. Uh, um, you know, from that standpoint, they've had, um, all, you know, 233 sessions and, uh, yeah. I, I, you know, if, if, you know, watching the, having helped produce and present, um, I haven't seen any issues get cropped up, um, as, as far as it goes. So. Yeah. Now oh, a phenomenal effort. I, well, I know we might be dropping one or two people at this point for a little over. So, but we, I mean, we can keep gabbing on ourselves, but, I want to remind everybody else that uh, we will be wrapping up the U.S. time zone today. 
Uh, at what time is that going to be again? Isn't it four o'clock uh, Pacific? Four o'clock yeah, Pacific. four o'clock Pacific. So kind of take a look back at the whole conference, uh, put our thoughts out there on that. Um, maybe try to talk a bit more about what possibly, you know, comes to be next looks like in the future. But um, but yeah, we're, it'll be us gathering and kind of wrapping things up for the U.S. time zone. Yeah, so hopefully you I'll guys think- can join us then. As I said, we'd love to have people join and maybe give share a highlight. Um, come off my, uh, mute and share with us what was a highlight for you. Uh, this isn't just about uh, the four of us uh, talking. It's it's really about the community. So uh, we'll set that out there now. If you join us at four o'clock Pacific today, um, come with your with your quick moment, your highlight or uh, memory from Commsverse. And uh, don't forget to join the UK and the US happy hours in VR. Yeah, here and UK what's happening in nine minutes, right? Nine minutes, yeah. yeah. So we'll all jump over to the to Alt Space and uh, be there for that. And then uh, I think the the US one is that right after our session is that at five Pacific, Jonathan? It's at um, six p.m. Pacific. So okay, we'll six p.m. Pacific. Okay. Excellent. Awesome. Thank you, everybody, for joining us again. Uh, this is going awesome. This is a lot of fun. And uh, yeah, we hope we'll, we'll see you back here in a few hours for uh, the wrap up or maybe in virtual reality in a few minutes. Yep. Hi, Josh, so how do yes. I get your t shirt? What's that? How do I get your t shirt? Microsoft. This t shirt? Yeah. You have to tap uh, Lori Potmeyer's shoulder for that. We got, I got this a couple conferences ago. I'm trying to remember where they were distributing that. Yes. Uh, maybe yeah, it was a Usually her swag's like a one-time thing. It's 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 totally different yeah. time. I'll, I'll put this one on eBay. And uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh, <my. laughs> yeah, yeah. I don't know if there was any more of them, but yeah, it was it was from a conference a couple years back, and there was several of them distributed then. But I don't know if there's any more lingering. So uh, thank you guys. Awesome. All right. Thank, thank you. you. Thanks, guys. Thank you. All right.